What's happening, YouTube? Awesomest Hobo here, back in the fields of Agora with none other than the scariest, the most feared hero to ever enter this game, Calamari. Hope you really enjoy the footage I've got here, as this was a very fun and exciting game for my buddy and I. So, after my first video, and as I've thought more and more about my purpose behind uh, entering the YouTube stage and making videos like these, I've ultimately decided to set my sight on two things from here on out, or two audience, two audiences. Uh, the first audience, the first uh, sight is showing some competitive and exciting footage for all the Paragon community. That's my first audience. But more importantly than that, at least for now, is my second audience, which is giving new players and those players looking to improve the tools and the info that they need to really take off and, and improve as quickly as possible as they can in this game. Uh, this is the first video I'll have that's majorly focused on uh, appealing to my second audience while having some really cool footage in the background from the much larger first audience. Good gameplay you could watch. Uh, yeah, I know, I only have two videos, so maybe that point was irrelevant. Assume you won. Uh, just wanted to get this info across as many of the next videos will follow this same suit. Videos from here on out won't have such a long way to intro either, so don't worry about that. That being said, let's get into what's really important today, what I'm really excited about talking about, and that is deck building. I really struggled on what topic I should cover first when I was thinking about the next video I wanted to make, but since the first thing you have to do when you start up the game is choose a deck, I figured that would probably be a pretty good place to start. I was actually reading the subreddit Paragon the other day, which if you haven't checked out, you should get on there. It's got some good stuff, good advice, good footage. There was this post that had a screenshot where a Greystone at the end of the game had 0 out of 45 cards. You've either done something like this or you definitely know somebody who's done this starting out playing the game. But give them a break. Look, saying you're, you, say you've started this game, so this is you know your first game ever, you don't really know much about Paragon, or, or, and or, this is your first MOBA ever, so you're not really familiar with the playstyle. It, it really isn't that crazy for people to overlook something like this. People just don't know. So, the first piece of advice before I really get into this video is, please watch the Paragon tutorial video that Epic has. They've created one that really helps you get familiar with what Paragon's about, and gives you really basic stuff so that you can really play the game and make use of everything that's a part of it. Uh, and it also keeps you from running at Prime Guardian and Muriel yelling, FREEDOM! with zero cards as a level 6 Muriel. Trust me, I've been playing this game a while, you see some really fun crap. So before you watch this, please check that video out. It's on the homepage in the game, or you can find it on YouTube. I'll probably leave a link in the description if you want to go to that. So, if you're still here, or you're just getting back from watching that, or you don't need to, it's just that you do if you're starting out, let's get right into the, what we're going to talk about today. So when you are starting out, um, the early levels of the game, around level 1 to 5, 1 to 6, something like that, you don't have access to Deck Builder. So you can't actually personalize a deck of your own. So what you have are beginner and intermediate decks. And these decks are not bad at all. You're not crutch because you only have these decks. They honestly are very good for the heroes as Epic has designed them to cater to the hero's strengths, weaknesses, and, and the role that the hero is supposed to play. Which brings me to my first point of this video, and one of the major points is before you can really get an effective deck, you need to understand your hero and you need to understand the he the role that that hero plays. So some of you are saying, Hobo, oh, I thought this was about building decks, not about super complex stuff. Bear with me. This concept isn't an easy one starting out, either, but it's very important. You know, you get into this game and you see Rampage, and you think it's love at first sight. There's a big old monster that can go Super Saiyan mode, chuck boulders at everybody, the regions health like crazy. Like, that's pretty freaking sweet. And you have Murdoch, who's my personal favorite, who's this robotic looking toy soldier with a massive laser shotgun that can disintegrate targets from across the map. And that's epic, no pun intended. So, to illustrate my first point, let's use Murdoch. Now, before we really get far of this, roughly 50% of the content of my videos will be my views, and are they're my opinions. They are debatable. You may have your own opinions. 
And guess what? That is fine. If you disagree with something I've said, throw it in the comments. We can discuss it. Obviously, no criminal matter. Let's not have some salt on my page. I can get some things wrong. I'm going to try to admit those and improve uh, on even my playstyle. So, that being said, that disclaimer out there, let's talk about murder. So, for the sake of the length of this video, I won't cover every role and how you should build them. I will cover the ranger builds using Murdoch as an example, as I feel rangers are one of the easier roles to pick up in almost, if not all, MOBAs. So, first, first things first to understand your hero and understand your role. Look at your hero's abilities. What do they do? Murdoch, he's got a shotgun with damage and energy penetration, which is shorter range than his basic attack. He's got a mine that slows down enemies and does damage as well. Um, he's got a shield that can bump people away from him and does damage to create some breathing room for him. And finally, he's got an ult that shoots a massive laser, massive laser for a massive amount of damage that ignores all armor and is glowing. Okay, you, you've seen these abilities, you've read them, you know what they do. Now, Let's talk about what his role is. He's listed as a ranger. So, before, even without playing him, you should know, okay, he probably has range attacks. And when you play one or two games with him, you know, he attacks from a distance. He's not he's not right up in the face of them. He has the survivability of a chipmunk versus a bear. Chipmunk being Murdoch, bear being Grux, Rampage, big fighters. So, that's his role. And then you look at his abilities, so you kind of understand your hero a little bit. In short, and to kind of summarize to help you with this concept, Rangers are very weak early game with low health and some decent damage. Fighters and casters can blow them up very easily, but as mid game rolls around they are much stronger and now they start to dish out some damage and now they become a threat. They're still squishy, but they're becoming more of a threat as the game goes on as they're building damage. In late game, they are scary if they're built right. They're very high damage dealers who are, their main responsibility is damage and kill as much of the enemy team as possible. So that's what a ranger does. Murdoch is one of those rangers. But, doing those few things that I said, it's not that simple, right? That's why this is only one part. The next step of this first part of understanding your hero and understanding his role is actually playing with Murdoch and seeing how his abilities work out in the game, and how his role is carried out. So first things first, when you get into a game to start Murdoch, and, and you need access to a deck, open the card store and actually select a deck. You know, th that's how a Greystone goes zero, zero and 45 cards at the end of the game. So for the PS4, it's a large button of the For the PC, it is the key key. And if you're still low level like we talked about, the pre-made decks are what you need to focus on. And these decks are easy to use because they're already made for you and, and they tell you what stats they're focusing on, such as attack speed and energy damage, or no attack speed, only critical energy, etc. And when you click these pre-made decks, it also tells you the order you should build your cards, like what parts, what times of the game you should build what card. So, if you're relatively new, you're still learning this game, stick with pre-made decks. So, moving on now, you have a grasp of what your hero can do by studying his abilities, and you know your role in the team, and you figure out how to access the deck and what cards to build. You're, you're good to go, you're starting out. Um, more can be said about understanding the hero in your role, but the best way to learn the hero is to use him, practice him in game, starting out with bots. Also, I would highly recommend watching videos of Murdoch gameplay, as this is a great way to learn or any hero that you But, now you've made it to the next step. You finally unlock Deck Builder. So now it's time to build all damage, attack speed, and crit. Whoa there, Ty. This is an early access Murdoch where you can one to two shot anybody. And, and yes, didn't know that was a thing. So this brings me to my second point, which is understand the crit. What is a meta? Well, meta in short is what works the best currently regarding playstyle, in, in the video game realm, regarding playstyle, uh, card build, team composition, uh, and some other things. So what is the meta for Paragon? Summarized, Paragon is dominated by the tank meta, where armor and health builds with some damage and attack speed are super effective, especially on fighters. A few patches ago, carries really dominated the core, and Twin Blast could literally 1v5 the entire enemy team 
come out of the fight full health. And that was when full damage attack speed life steal worked very well. But those three stats have been nerfed since. So carries are very weak early, but still strong late as they should be. So, because the meta is dominated by armor and health, carries who only build damage, attack speed, etc., with no health or armor, will be punched to death in a matter of seconds by a Grux or Chimera who follows this meta, while they're shooting these fighters and they're barely tickling their health bars because of the armor and health that they have. So there is a support role to keep these kinds of fighters off of you so you can deal damage to them, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about your build and your role in this video and how you can make the most of this. So, if this is a tank meta, how do I build my range? Like I said, this is this is where my views and opinions will start to come out, as there are so many cards available, builds can vary, which which is super unique and very cool about Paragon. But my build's not the best, so instead of giving you cards saying, hey, build this card now, build this card then, da da yada yada yada, and and these specific upgrades, I'm not gonna give you specifics, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you stats, I'm gonna give you ideas. And I'm going to give you a mentality that you should keep in mind when you're trying to build a deck. Not only for Murdoch, but for everybody. So, keeping in mind you're here on your role and understanding the current meta, your final build for someone like Murdoch, the stats would be around 215 and 250 damage as your base attack, about 35 to 60 attack speed, about 64 to 120 energy penetration, and about 2200 to 2800 health. Those stats are very good for Murdoch builds. Uh, personally, I also add a Blink Shot or a Blink Charm if you don't have that card, as it gets me out of life-threatening situations. If you don't know what those cards are, Blink Charm is available to everybody. Blink Shot is an epic card. It basically allows you to teleport a distance forward. So having these kinds of stats will give you the damage and the attack speed that you need to fire powerful shots quickly the penetration you need to maximize damage against tanky opponents who build energy armor against you, and the health to keep you to survive long enough for a support or another hero with crowd control to keep the fires and assassins off you so you can keep dishing out the damage that you need to do. For those interested, like I said, I will include a description of my deck um, so that you can see an example of something that I use on a regular basis. I really think I have a good deck going. I'm not going to say mine's the best that's out there, but it works really well. And like I said, please, please remember, this is my opinion, and it's shaped by my experience and the playstyle that I have for Murdoch uh, as a hero. It's not perfect. And it's not necessarily the best stats for him. It's not necessarily the best deck for him. But these are typically the stats I see with Murdochs who do very well either on my team or the opposing team. Like I said, I'll include my build if you want to check it out and get an idea of some cards that would be pretty good to use to get the stats the, the, around around the stats that you need. Another way to really boost your stats early game is to make use of what are called the fully upgraded bonuses. If you have minor casts, lesser healths, minor kinetics, or any one point upgrade card values, these are upgrade cards, not regular cards. You, you put these upgrade cards on the regular cards. So see if you can implement these low-cost upgrade cards. So let's look at an example for someone like Murdoch. So when I first start out the game, I buy a health pot, two cast tokens. This gives me some good early damage. It gives me a health pot to, to sustain in lane in case I take any damage. I can stay there and keep farming and keeping the fight. My first back, I normally wait until I've gotten enough CXP to have six extra cards to spend. So I back to base. First card I get is almost always Magus Ward. It's either my first or my second card. And my upgrades for that are three minor casts. So the base stats you get are 6.5 energy damage, and you get 75 mana. So I upgrade, I buy that, cost three. I upgrade it with my minor casts, which costs three extra. And I get the fully upgraded pass passive bonus when I upgrade it with these three minor cards. And it gives me a total of 32.5 damage and 75 mana and 90 at nine cards. So, when I go back to lane, I wait until I get another six cards to spend. And I go back, and I buy Staff of the Adamant, which gives you 6.5 energy damage and 100 health. So I upgrade that with three lesser healths, which gives me 400 health, but the fully upgraded passive bonus for that card gives me extra damage. 
So at 15 cards, I now have a second card, Staff of Adamant, that gives me 400 extra health and 20 extra damage because of the fully upgraded passive bonus that I made use of. So at 15 cards, I have a Mega Sword, Staff of the Adamant, Health Bot, and two Cast Tokens, giving me the stats of 65 extra damage, 400 extra health, and 75 mana with the Health Bot. This really helps me early game dish out some good damage, roughly about 100 per shot, while not getting blown up by some fighter like Chimera or Grux in two seconds because I have that extra 400 health. Keep in mind these early built cards do not and should not stay with you all game. They're to help you early game, but you should discard them and have cards that are worth higher values to give you better stats in the game. Because you only have six card slots, so you have to make the best use of the values, the best use of those slots that you can. These cards help you gain an advantage early game over your laning opponent over the other team. So you can stay alive, but you can also dish out damage. Also, this is a side rant, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but please have wards in all of your decks. If you want to know why I'm saying that, I talk about that in my first video. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll tell you what time in case that's all you want to really see in my video. They're very, very important. So, if you want to know why and you don't agree with me, check out that video I explained right now. To summarize for this video, the first point I wanted you to understand was understand the hero that you're playing and the role that you have in your team composition. The second point is to understand the current meta as to what works the best, what works effectively, and what doesn't. Such as with rangers, building a good amount of health to keep you in the fight with a lot of damage is good, but building full damage attack speed and lifesteal doesn't really work anymore. And finally, the third point is to combine these two ideas to build a deck that best lines up with what you know about your hero, what you know about your role, and what you understand about the meta, what works the best. And keep in mind, don't be afraid of messing up your build. It's inevitable. You're going to mess it up the first time, especially if you're doing it on your own without looking up anything. And trial and error is what's going to get you to building great decks over time. So to help you out, check websites out like Agora.gg. It gives you statistics for your games, but also people have posted decks on there. And there's some pretty good decks on there that you can try. Some of them you may, like, may not like, some of them you may really like. Another way is looking at YouTube videos. A lot of YouTubers post videos for specific heroes with specific decks and specific cards. Some of you are saying, well, why didn't you do that here? I could do that, and I've leaving my deck in the description in case you want something like that. But I wanted to make a video that gives you the, the real reasoning behind it, the mentality that you should have when you're thinking about building your decks. So you can build decks not just for Murdoch, but for almost every hero in the game because you understand where they fit, uh, where they fit in the team composition, what role they should play. So giving you a big picture, so you're not this cookie cutter type always copying up these decks. You can make it for your own, you can be unique, you can have a sense of uh, accomplishment because you, you made this deck and it works well. So, all in all, I really hope you enjoyed this video and you benefited from it in some way. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button, subscribe, or leave a comment letting me know any thoughts that you may have regarding this topic or any other topics. So I hope you have a fan-freaking-tastic day, and we'll see you in the next one.